You want to do the movie? I mean, you do whatever you want to do. It's your show. Do whatever I want. It's my show. Oh, yeah, singing and dancing. Show. <laughs> oh, it's my show. I don't think that's what you want to do. Uh, I don't want to do whatever I want. Wait, singing and dancing. I don't think you oh. want to sing and dance. I've always, I've always told that story. The scariest improv thing I ever did was was uh, yeah. Phyllis Brutch in there. And she said, do whatever you want for two minutes. And I was just like, that's the end of the world. <laughs> Welcome to Hate Watching with Dan and Tony. Let's start out with a laugh. I'm Dan. I'm Tony. See, we're laughing. You're supposed to keep laughing. So we're going to start out with a laugh. <laughs> That's all acting. It's almost like we're in the movie that we're watching today. Oh, the movies. People start laughing. Director, start laughing. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Why Got are you laughing? Because I'm laughing. I, I don't know. Somebody tell me. So on this show, we watch a movie. Last week, we Mm. had watched The The Turning, Turning. based on The Turn of the Screw. This week. Great movie. A movie with Finn Wolfhard. (laughs) This week, Tony picked another movie, but not really another movie. It's it's a similar. I have a theory, by the way, and I'm going to say until the end so we can talk about everything but i have a theory that this movie is a prequel to the turning i have a theory what movie is this oh this movie is another fantastic film based on the novella a turn of the screw and this is of course in a dark place starring lily sobieski and oh i forgot the other woman's name darn it other people. She, she, I the other woman thing. in this, the other woman in it was uh, one of the Baratheons in um, Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, no, she's had a she's had a career. You know? Yeah, she's done some she's, stuff. Yeah, she's good. Um, yeah, uh, I think it was two thousand and four, two thousand and six. Yeah, our, early early aughts. Is that what they say? Yeah, uh, just a, a, an impenetrable hour and thirty nine minutes. Just a, pl- a plodding uh, hour and thirty nine minutes. Dan, did you watch this with commercials? No, I paid ninety nine cents. You could rent this on Amazon oh, for ninety nine cents. From, you made the right choice because I'm going <laughs> to. I streamed it for free with ads, and every commercial break, it was a struggle not to turn it off because it's a minute, a minute and a half to two minutes of not watching the movie, and you're like, "Ah, oh, man, I really want to turn this off. I need a break." I usually watch the movie on Thursday and Friday. I kind of watch a half an hour. You do a two parter, forty five okay. minutes and forty five minutes. This one I finished this morning. I still had about. 48 minutes left this morning. 48? It's all, you didn't so even it, watch an hour the first two days? The first two days, I couldn't even get through an hour Ooh. of this movie. Oh, this boy, movie, that's not good at all. This movie makes you makes you wish for Finn Wolfhard. I... I would. Oh boy, At that's a he- tough. That's a tough pill to swallow, Dan. I don't know if I quite <laughs> wish for him, but I would say it's it would be a reprieve. It's the best you're gonna get, Finn Wolfhard. Take it. Um, this version, uh, this version did a couple of things better. A couple of things better. It did. Yeah, absolutely. Because she, the things this movie did better. So oh, if you yeah. didn't watch last, go back and watch last week. It's it's two hours of your life you're never getting back. <laughs> so basically, the story is: woman mm. goes to be the new nanny or art therapy the teacher. Furness. <laughs> goes to take care of these two kids. Mm-hmm. We find out that there was an old governess nanny that has died, and then also like a man who may or may not have been a gigantic problem. And then <laughs> possibly the two ghosts of these dead people are ghosting and mm-hmm. perhaps possessing the children, perhaps convincing the children to do bad things, maybe not even existing. Maybe, yeah, who knows? Pretty <laughs> wide open on the spectrum. Yeah, so so once again, this movie's like, you know what we're going to do? We're not going to answer any questions. We're just we're gonna- not going to take a stance. <laughs> we refuse. And I get, from my understanding, the book is also open ended, right? Sure. So I guess they're just trying to stay faithful, but make a choice. 
Make a choice. It's a modern audience. Make a choice. Modern audiences just, they do not have that that bone in them that wants to be conflicted no. and confused where they walk out of the theater no. going like, what just happened? What, what did what, I watch? What Somebody tell me. So this movie, what it does better is okay. it, it makes it seem like she could be crazy. A I, lot, a I'm, lot better. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, she is. Oh, you're saying she's she's crazy. I think she's it does I'm not saying the movie answers that question. I'm saying in my opinion, yeah, she's not so. You're going with the main thing going on there is she's crazy. Yeah, I think yeah. this movie makes that postulates that and and backs it up pretty well with what happens. Is she's crazy and I mean, of course it's she's third act crazy. We don't spend act 1 and 2 really establishing that she's crazy. We're just like we really make her act crazy. Well, you touch on it a little because she has the 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 swing set dreams. Yes. Um, so it does that. And so she's locked into the house more. So you you believe her sure. that she's not gonna want to leave and yeah. you know, she's not a stable person who go who you know, the last one, she was a stable person who would just She you certainly know. seemed like it, and she made a pinky promise. You can't break <laughs> those, those are bonding. Yes, yeah, so the, she, <laughs> she's stuck there. So whatever happens, and then the kids. While this one, the kids are uh, largely irrelevant to the story. Yeah, it turns it turns out they're not a big deal at all. In all of the other, all of them, the one other that we watched, plus the haunting of Blind Manor, the kids yeah. are pretty much the focal point of the weirdness that's happening yeah. in this movie. Nope, nope. They almost do nothing. They do almost nothing. They occasionally do a little weird thing that maybe draws you in a direction or, you know, something, but nah, for the most part, eh, not much. Yeah, not no, much. don't worry about it. They're definitely not being haunted, like, or possessed. That's They're the word possessed. I was looking They're for. They're absolutely not possessed in this Yeah, one. that we don't deal with that at all in this one. And we really don't give you a feeling that the ghosts are, like, talking to them or really influencing them consistently. There's one moment in the movie that I was like, oh, there, that could be right. And it's when Flora is up late. And the and the the governess comes in and she's like, "Hey, did you have a bad dream?" She's like, "No, did you?" And then when she leaves, Flora looks over in a direction and smiles, like laughs a little. Uh-huh. I was like, "Oh, maybe she has a friend." But we never do anything like that again for the rest of the movie. So I maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe you're going crazy. Um, so that thing, you know. So the, the other movie had better kids. Um, I think and it's Finn Wolfhard. You know what I mean? Saying that's better. That's a low <laughs> bar that they could not surpass. Well, I mean, they, these kids, it's not that they're bad. It's just they, they're not doing anything. Well, that's true. Finn, that's true. Finn did a couple things like bang a drum at someone. He, I mean, like, he okay. banged the shit out of that drum, though. OK, that was the scariest moment in the in the universe. And like when he made a pass at her, you were like, well, OK, that's weird. You know, when right, the kid good. in this thing, I, does know, I was like, thing. good for you, Finny. Go get her. <laughs> what about when the kid makes his move in this this movie? Uh, well, this one's because, again, Finn Wolfhard was at least a teenager. This kid's definitely 10, maybe 11. And so when he does a little peekaboo, I was I was a little weirded out, but also on board still. Because I was like, good for you, kid. You got to get what you get. You know? And I we'll talk about that when we get there, because there are some weird themes in this movie that, you know, that, yeah. that play into that. It's not as out of the blue that it probably should be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the music in this one... Uh, Terrible in a very different direction. So weird. So, so, so weird. The end credit song is like a weird 90s rock song, it felt oh, like. Really? Like Matrix style, like da 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 And I was like, where did this come from? This has nothing to do with anything I just watched for 90 minutes. Yeah, this this composer was like, I'm going for it. And then everyone afterwards were like, <laughs> oh, for hold my beer, everybody. I'm going for it. And I'm sure they were like, can we do it again? No, we don't, do we have any money? No? All right. Print it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So we start. Uh, she's our girl. Anna is a, is an art teacher, an art therapy teacher. So we do a lot of art therapy where we, we look at a picture and we're like, oh, now we understand what's going on with the kid. Oh, we put extra people in the picture. That means there's ghosts. Or it just yeah. means they miss the people. We don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Don't, don't, don't think about it too hard. 
she's on the floor and there's broken glass and yeah, she's something cleaning has something happened maybe? and we're not sure what's going on and the so weird- we missed the actual breaking or anything like that it's just her on the ground but it seems like she's like uh, on the ground she's having problems she's yeah she's having problems so the head guy comes in there and takes her to Uh-oh. his office and then he's like it's not working out hand on the on the knee and then he rapes her I mean, he's definitely, they don't tell you that he goes all the way. Sure. Let me be clear. But he's definitely sexually harassing her at a minimum. You know what I mean? And we're to find out later that she's kind of, she ends up being sort of haunted by her younger self, who we sort of found that finds out was molested as a kid and the thing and her candy apple got dirt on it. And then the mom didn't believe her. I guess. Yep. And yep, it's it's a theme that I'm not super comfortable with. You know sure. what I mean? Like sure. I don't. I I get all ugh, obviously as I think you should, but it's a it's it's hammered pretty hard in the movie, and then it kind of branches into are the new kids also being molested? I I don't know. So we'll we'll get there. But what I do want to say is what's weird to me about this and then the Miss Gross scene later that we'll talk about is she gets fired and then they make their move on her. Usually yeah. I feel like, and listen, I've, you know, I've uh, thank God I've never been in this situation on either side of it, sure. but I feel like normally they're like, do you want to keep your job? Then let me fondle you as yes. opposed to you're fired. Now let's make out. I felt like that was a weird direction, but they both do it. And it's they super both do weird. the same sort of thing. And it's, and yeah. I mean, if it seems like they, they sort of imply that she's bringing it on in a way, in a weird, weird way. In I, All right. I'm going to, I won't talk about this too much because I don't want to start rumors, but I have a theory that this director is completely in love with Lily Sobieski. Like oh, there's some weird saying. Weird things that I felt that didn't suit the story, Got but it. he was like, uh, Lily. Um, however, she's very um, provocative in the film, and it kind of felt like they were vilifying that to me. Like being like, not vilifying, but being like, well, you know, if you're going to dress like that, you know, things are going to happen. Because before that scene... When the headmaster comes in, she's on the ground and her legs are – she's wearing like stockings and her mm-hmm. legs are out of the table. And he's like checking her legs out. And then like I guess that's like the green light. I don't know. It was it was weird. I got a weird vibe from the whole thing. So you're, you're thinking that the director sort of is male gazing on her like in a weird I, way that doesn't sort of fit with what the I, well, writer I, was maybe under- trying to say. Yeah. And I think yeah. – I see. That. I think that the movie, obviously, the movie is about that in a way, yeah. Like sexualizing her, yeah. Uh, like from start to finish, right? But I just, yes. it's just, it just felt weird to me. It didn't feel like, oh, this is the story we're telling, to me. But maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Maybe I just didn't get it. Maybe it's too artistic for me, Dan. It was not very artistic. <laughs> okay. Um, and they they have a tendency to sort of. Maybe not linger on her breasts, but oh no 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 oh. no no they linger <laughs> okay. they linger <laughs> they show them up they're in every scene every time you see here they are in some way shape or form front and center okay and I it made me uncomfortable that I feel like that's hard to do okay because I, I don't know it was it was weird there were a couple moments where I was like why why. Why are her boobs in my face right now? I don't understand. And it, it would be like even just when she's like in the kitchen making eggs or something. And yeah. you'd just be like, why, why am I kind of fixating on her breasts? And it's like, I, the, I don't. The eggs is actually the- a great point, Dan, because she's like, she's making the eggs and she's kind of tossing them with a spatula as you no, do. She's, no, 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 no. Is it no, not no. a spatula? It's a wooden spoon. Which, <laughs> it's a wooden spoon. Okay. Let me, let me tell you something. I make eggs all Every day I make eggs, and you know what I use? I use a spatula. That's what you use on eggs. That's why I assume. You don't use a wooden spoon. That's very (laughs) stupid, very ineffective. And I gained a, I gained a lot. I mean, not gained. 
I was very disrespectful of her cooking skills when she was doing it with the spoon. I was like, "Good for you, Dan. Take a stand. Mm, you know, good, you gotta stand. Good. You gotta stand up to what you believe in." Okay, uh, so she's with a wooden spoon, which is even weirder. <laughs> but we're not, for the most part, we're not watching the eggs, but we're in this mid shot of her tossing the eggs, but it's mostly just boobs. There's no, I don't, there's no reason for it. Nobody on screen is noticing it. You know what I mean? Like if maybe Miss Gross was, you know, gazing upon her and that's why we're staring at her boobs in this moment. Like I can understand, it's motivated. God. I didn't feel like it was motivated for the most part in this movie. And it's just like, yeah, whoever's behind the camera is just like, ah, focus on the middle area. Just, yeah, just right there. That's, that's good. That looks nice. Let's get that shot. Get in there. <laughs> I, get I in don't know. There. And okay. I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm not throwing accusations. I'm just saying this is how I felt while watching the movie. I am a person who doesn't see the artifice of directing. I'm not good at, you know, it's like I sure. could never direct. I, cause I'd be like, well, let's just sit the camera up here and everything will happen in front of it. <laughs> just go and then just go. All right. You know, it's like, yeah. that's, that's why I like live stuff. And, you know, it's like sure. set up a yeah. camera. Stage boom. work is nice. Yeah. So when I notice things, that's it's not a problem. Good. That's <laughs> not good. That's You've done something like, very wrong. What is happening here? I, 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 I don't know why she's wearing yeah. like something like this that's saying this. And I'm like, and we're shooting it like this. I'm like, what is going on here? I, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's a weird vibe. It's a weird vibe. Maybe that. Maybe the whole idea is he's just going for that sort of vibe to like make you uncomfortable. Maybe he thinks it services the story that he's telling. I'm not sure. Here's what I will say: is I read an interview that he did, and he has never read the book. He's never read the novella, and so he was just the people that wrote the movie oh, have obviously sure. read the novella, but he yeah. had never read it. So the vibe is just like whatever he felt like. Wow, it's almost so like take that for what you will. Maybe take a little time to do that. I, in his defense, here's what I'll say: I did buy it this week, and Stop. I am 24 pages in, and I have read it for like two hours. It's oh. dense and it's hard to get through, but I am determined to do it by the time we meet again next week. I always remember we we read um, Tale of Two Cities when I was in. Ah, uh, sure, yeah. And I remember reading that, and you're, you know, you're like, oh, Tale of Two Cities, you know, oh, Tale of Two Cities. Everyone's like, oh, Tale of Two Cities. I read it, and I was like, this is the greatest book ever. Love this book. Because oh, okay. it Because it wasn't like this dense. It was just story, 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 yeah. story, story. Things happen, story, story, story. And I'm like, you give me story, I'm in. I'm, I understand I'm story. In. All right, yeah. I'm there. Well, don't read The Turning of the Screw, Dan. <laughs> You're not going to love it. I'll tell a lot, you that right A lot now. of metaphor and a lot of uh, environment and, and run feeling. Run on sentences. There, he does a sentence with like six commas, and that's too many commas. I don't – times were different back then, I understand, but it's a lot of commas, and it's hard because the thoughts are broken up so much, and you're like, I don't even know what this one sentence, and then I have to reread it, and it's – it's a whole thing, man. Tony's Tony's got the you know your 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 dissect you know like you do in English. Chart, like, I got my chart with the with the <laughs> slides, and that's just per <laughs> sentence. Uh. So she goes home. The headmaster's there looking at papers. He's looking at this thing. He's like, ah, oh, he's found her a job. Now why? Oh, to get rid of her. But he fired her. But he's now he wants to really get rid of her. Or maybe because he wants of to, the sex. Maybe he wants to, you know, throw her a solid to, you know, really disappear. To say out. like, hey, thanks. thanks. Thanks for the the handy. Here's yeah. a job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't guess. Know. It's really weird. I don't understand it, but it's fine. So Anna goes to the big business place, goes up the <laughs> elevator with the assistant. Um, he looks at her and he's like, okay, you got the job. Who's like, this is this is the 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 brother of the dead parents of the two kids yeah the so uncle he's your classic i want this off my thing you can't ever bother me you're on your own i'm gonna send mrs gross with you she's i don't know why she was there she's that's, his, so she's, that's my biggest question mark of the whole movie he says that she's his personal assistant yeah and then he just sends her to the cottage indefinitely seems but like indefinitely question right yeah. Who was at the cottage while they were all at the office? Because Flora was technically home. Oh well, there was a little. There's a housekeeper at the beginning. 
There was a there cook. Was? There was a cook. There was a cook and right. like in a couple scenes there's also a driver, but then at a certain point but in the where movie, do they, go? they all leave. They they all they all get in they all they say this. They say Oh, they oh, actually say this. Yes, okay. They, I do not remember all, this at all. They all hop in a car and you're like, Who's hopping in the car? And then like it's seen later they tell you, Oh, the servants have all gone for the weekend. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All this takes place over a weekend? Oh boy. I I guess. I don't I don't I think know. There's, I think yeah, I think yes, I do think everything happens over All I right. mean it, we have the first because I think Miles comes home on a Wednesday and I'm assuming she gets yeah, there on a Monday. Yeah, because he was supposed to come home on a Friday, but he came earlier or something. I don't know. Yeah, so I think we I think this is a week. I think this whole thing is okay. a week. That she, would boy, make, she really unravels fast. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's unfortunate. Um so she's good. Contact me only in an emergency. She give you know, here's a big fat salary. Here's a clothing. Here's a clothing allowance. Go buy yourself some clothes. And Very then she weird. buys the worst clothes ever. They're it, all terrible. It, they're, you would think she'd be buying some sort. You know, I expected there to be a point of appropriate clothes versus inappropriate. You know, like some no. some explanation as to what that clothes budget meant. But we, it doesn't mean anything. Nope, doesn't mean nothing. Um, car picks her up. She sees her childhood ghost standing there, or doesn't see her. Um, and then uh, Mrs. Gross is with her. Um, the nephew's returning on Friday. The parents were killed in a plane crash. They arrive at the house. They get a tour of the house. She's happy. She's like, oh, my house. And then the staff is also leaving Friday. There's a cook, Sheila. And then someone named. Oh, I wow. Guess, she had a name. I didn't even know she was in the movie. Write it down, baby. It's incredible. I mean, she, she literally appears, I believe, in about two scenes, maybe okay. three. Um, All right. I, I think Mrs. Gross's name is Emma, but we always call her Mrs. Gross. Yeah, yeah. She then we have the first of the baths. She takes the first a bath. of several. Thankfully, this is not an overhead bath where we see dirty water. We just oh see man, that water <laughs> last week was so gross, and she went under. She opened her eyes. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, this is like a nice <laughs> bubble bath. It it looks wonderful. She's laughing and acting drunk. She spills. So much water out of the tub. Irresponsible. It doesn't care. Like doesn't care. Like, she oh. thinks it's hilarious. I don't yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this scene. I again <laughs> the vibe is weird, and I feel like it's just the director is like, Well, you're naked in a bath. Let's just let's giggle and have some fun, babe. And action. She had she had one hour to freshen up and she takes a bath. <laughs> she takes <laughs> Yeah. Yep. And, and so when she finally goes out to, to see Mrs. Gross. I was like, oh, man, she's going to get, you know, she's going to be there an hour and a half. And Gross is going to, like, give her some crap, you know, just like, what the hell? But no, yeah, no. that that tension. No, fine. No tension. <laughs> no tension whatsoever. Yeah, there, we don't need it. You know, these movies, that's the thing about both these movies. They never build up any tension. No, well, you don't, you know, you don't need tension in a horror movie. You know, you're wrong, Dan. <laughs> I am you wrong. Know. That's That's true. I generally am wrong. Uh, and then she thanks for uh, she thanks Mrs. Gross for the bathroom stuff because I guess the bubble bath she used Mrs. Gross put in there for like, her and she's it, all like <laughs> she's all like yeah thank you for doing that yeah uh, okay good that's yeah I did that for you you're like what what is, what is what happening? why what do you what do you mean it's weird uh, Flora comes in she's cute they say let's go have some fun. Uh, and then Flora goes and starts being a little weird with dolls. We have a couple, yeah. have a, like couple scenes with her being weird with dolls. Maybe we have one scene she puts them on the couch scene, and then she drowns a doll at the end scene. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, once again, any director that says, "Okay, little inter girl, interact weirdly with dolls," wrong movie. Unless you're yeah, really going to make that girl a freak. <laughs> yep. Nope. It's it's just a we. I don't understand anything. I don't understand anything. How about that? It's bizarre. People love dolls as some sort of surrogate for something, but then they don't. Sure. The people that love dolls for a surrogate of something never lay out what they're being a surrogate for and never have them have yeah. any effect. Sure, which sure. Ex yeah. Which exhausts us. <laughs> um, ba -ba -bum. I wrote a word I cannot read. Oh, what is it? A Context clues. As the AST, oh, he asks her about Mrs. Jessel, maybe, or we find out about Mrs. Jessel, who was the old. Oh, sure. Thing. So yeah. maybe we, we find that name. I don't know. Miles is coming. She puts Flora to bed. Then after Wait, Flora's did we in do bed, art already? 
No, we haven't done any art yet. Okay. All right. Puts Florida to bed for the very first... I don't think we did any art. I just wrote she was being weird with dolls. I don't think we did art. Uh, Miles right. is coming, not yet. Puts Florida to bed, and then we have the weird dinner with Mrs. Gross. And she's all like, Mrs. Gross, we should be friends. And then she's like, let us be acquaintances. And then... Yeah, what? It's really weird. <laughs> What's happening? But, spoilers... There's a lot of lesbian subtext between the two of them. Yeah. And then some not subtext. And then it stops being subtext. And then just text. Is that what is that the opposite of yes. subtext? Just stops text. Being, go, we go straight to text at a certain point. All right. Yeah. Uh, she asks, who's Mrs. Jessel? And she says, your predecessor. Predecessor. I do love how they say that word, predecessor, instead of predecessor, which is what I say. Oh, I think they're both right. Uh, that night, of course, she wakes up and wanders the halls because there's whispering and clumps and things. She sees Flora. Uh, a lot of whispering. You're having a nightmare, and then Flora's all like smiley. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. And then she leaves, and Flora lays down, but then turns her head oh, all that's... the way around and smiles at somebody, right? Uh, I don't remember. I, did, I probably was writing at that point, so I, I mean, did not I wrote, notice that. I wrote it down. Yeah, I have I no proof of it, but this is the one time in the movie that I was like, oh, she sees a ghost. But does that's she, it. And then never she, again. Does she? It doesn't seem like it. No, it seems like I made this up. Well, it starts snowing, so we're going to have snow the rest of the movie. Beautiful. Uh, she has Love breakfast. Snow. Mrs. Gross, we get the letter from Miles' school. He was expelled. And then Mrs. Gross is all like, that's your problem now. That's all you. All you. Right. Like, don't you can't tell the uncle. Like, you have to deal with it. Here's a letter that's literally addressed to the uncle, but you should open it, which is a federal crime. Ooh, but please do it. Time. It's it's quite weird. You know, they're, they're yes. trying to set up like this weird power structure where like you're in charge of everything. Yeah. And you're like, why? Know. Why would she be in charge of everything? Nobody knows. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. So they there. She's all like, let's go see Miles. So they drive to Miss to Miles. So once again, now the children are not trapped there. They can just leave freely. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. We got that tension. The tension of like <laughs> Flora not being able to leave off the table. We're not, we're not going to do that. No, no, no. That's too much. Too much to do. Uh, on the trip to see Miles, she asks Miss Gross, "Is Miles bad?" And then she's just like, "The strange children." Were they strange children? Not really. I didn't. I didn't get any strange vibes from them. To be honest with you, I well, don't know. They seem pretty normal. Yep. At the school, we find out that he's a bad influence. Which? Find, what you know, does what? that mean? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I like in at least in. Was it the turning that he fought somebody? I think he, yeah, I think he beat up a kid. Something like that. Like, at least that makes sense. But he literally was just like, oh, he's a bad influence on the kids. Like, wh what do you mean? What he's, is that? He, he's being weird around the kids. And so, <laughs> they, you know. There's too much is... of a weirdo. We're going to kick him out of school. <laughs> but, I mean, he actually, that was one of the one of the best, one of the only good lines in the movie is the dude was like, we got a bunch of rich kids here, and we got to keep it going. So if you're a problem, you just you're, you're just gone. Out. You're yeah. just out we, immediately. We don't, we we don't really care. care. We don't care about anything. We're not going to help you. You just got to go. You're rocking the boat. You're out of the boat. You're like, yeah, you know, listen, you, yeah, it's all it's probably from donations. Anyhow, so like we need those. You got to get out. Donations? No. They That's how they people. keep the school ahead, right? No, they charge. It's a, it's a rich guy school. Rich kids. Yeah, school. isn't that how they do schools? I don't know. Donations? They do kids schools. No, you pay tuition. Tuition donation is the same thing. We're well, no, paying for your kid to no. go to school. Donation, very different thing. Lori Laughlin went to jail, right, for paying for her kid to go to school. So I, that's that. In that tuition, guys, come on. <laughs> no, don't think that's how it works. <laughs> um, here comes Miles. He's he, he. Oh, this is his third expulsion. Right, uh, which is which is weird. Yeah, bad influence, tragic. Flora gives someone a drawing. Because, like, at, at what point do people just stop letting you into schools? You if know, like, if oh, you're... you've been expelled twice, but please come to my rich person school where we have no sympathy for you. That doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, no, they'll always take you. If you pay them money. Yeah, if you pay them money. That's but the tuition, not donations. Oh, okay, yes, got tuition. It. You give donations, they're like, who are you? Oh, yeah, thank you for the donation. We don't want your kid. We don't want your child. Sorry. <sighs> uh, here comes Miles. Miles and Flores, uh, same height. I'm like, oh, 
okay, that's weird. Yeah, are they twins? Are they the same? No, age? there's three. No, nope. like two or three years of difference. Yeah, because she hasn't got. She's not going to school. That's true, I guess. Well, right. I just thought maybe there weren't girl schools. You know, he went yeah, to an they, all boys school. I don't they know. don't have rich schools for girls. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. Classic America. Wait, that's is this uh, England? That's called. Are we in London? Cooking school. No, we're in America still, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, oh, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know where we are. We're probably in, telling you. Probably in Toronto or one of those places. Ah, Toronto. Um, he apologizes to her. They ride. She falls asleep. She dreams of the candy apple girl. And then she has another dream where she can't make Miles up. This is called yeah. foreshadowing. He's going to die. Wake up. I guess. You're dead. Wake up. I was like, wow, they're killing Miles early in this episode. <laughs> nope. He's only in the movie for three minutes and they just kill him off. That'd be fun. It'd be different. Surprising. Yeah, why not? Good for you. Try something. Mix it up. Got to deal with things. Um, no. They get home. Oh, no. They, uh, they they wake her up. They're like, she's like, tell me about Miss Jessel. And then Mrs. Gross is like, she was good. But she drowned. The kids found her. She was pregnant. And then yeah, wait, what? It's a lot of that a lot of info. New. A lot of info. Yeah. she was pregnant. So the kids are disturbed. Are the kids disturbed? And she's all Not like, particularly. Eh. <laughs> but please stay, please stay. And her 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 big response is, sure, sure, sure. You know, I'll do it. Sure. You know, you know how I can get Shannon to try to punch me. If she wow. asked me. She asked me a question. Saying I say, sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I get yelled at a lot too. I'm not gonna lie, but I say I th- I feel like I say sure a lot because it's my uh, I'll do it, but I don't like want to do it. You know what I mean? That's exactly <laughs> what sure means. That is not the answer anyone's looking for. No, no, it sure isn't. <laughs> uh, and then she's like, and Mrs. Gross is like, "Thank you." This is the point. The whole staff leave. Now we start the art therapy. As soon as staff is gone, art therapy. So I we I think we do art before Dan because they do the finger painting and Flora is playing with the dolls and she doesn't want to finger paint. Do you remember oh, this? Oh, okay, sure. And it's just my favorite part of the movie. Oh, sorry, and I have I to talk about it. Real part, quick. I almost missed your favorite part of the finger I know, painting. It, it, was, it would have been a tragedy. I would have brought ah. it up at the end either way. But listen to this. So <laughs> Anna is doing finger painting. She's just covered in paint, right? Her hands are just covered. And she's painting. Flora's playing with her dolls over here. Oh, my God. She's so cute. You just got her sweetest little pup. Look at her little face. So she's playing with these dolls. <laughs> and Anna's like, do you want to come finger paint? And Flora's like, no, it's not ladylike. Oh, man, I don't remember that scene. At you all. don't remember this? I must so have says, it's not it. ladylike. I must have paused it and then it jumped like 20 seconds because it does sure. that on Amazon. Of course it does. Nothing. <laughs> not, none of these streaming sites work the way they're supposed to. Okay. They, good to know. Okay, um, it's not ladylike. So then, wow, so then that Anna, never comes up again. Okay, Anna gets mad, and oh. she starts going, "Who told you that? Who told you that, Flora? Who said that to you?" And then we just cut away. Oh, I, I see, don't know I, what it means. I don't know. It doesn't seem to come back ever. Because then, in the next <laughs> next time we see art, Flora's just like, "I love art. Let's do art." <laughs> I have no idea what this scene is. But she gets mad, and she's like personally offended that someone said art isn't ladylike, and I don't know. I want to see that movie. So Mrs. Gross and uh, Anna, we see them sort of the love connection is happening. Oh, yeah. It's building. <laughs> oh, yeah. They they like each other. I don't know why. <sighs> hot older lady. Hot younger lady. That's how it happens. Sure, I guess, yeah, I guess that's all you need. Good for um, you. Now we sort of go into, like, we sort of social art. We sort of show the kids running around. They're playing in the snow. They build a snowman. They kill the snowman. They run off. And then she's all like, wait, wait for me. Tony. And she is so much slower than the children. <laughs> it's so weird. You have nephews and nieces and things. I do. Are they all much faster than if they were to like no, run on the field? Let me they tell just, you why. They would just out, you'd just be like, oh, stop. I'm not even stop. a fast guy, right? Let's be clear. I'm a big guy. I lumber. But their legs are so short, Dan, that I can take two long steps and that's 10 steps for them so i am faster than them at least for now and one of them is like 11 or 12 oh yeah so oh. Uh, you know yeah when they get to be finn wolfhards you're, you're right, dead yeah. 
You're dead. When his legs are almost <laughs> as long as mine and he's skinny and quick and agile, yeah, you're going to demolish me. Absolutely. But these are little kids. These little are kids not, with not tiny kids. little legs just shuffling along in the snow. <laughs> not a chance. Unbelievable. Not a chance. Well, maybe she but does. But to be fair, yeah. she kind of moves like an ogre. Did you notice that in this movie? I did when not she's notice trying that to she move quickly, like an ogre. No, Tony, she... I did not notice her ogre movements. Well, you probably should have paid more attention because when she's trying oh, to shit. move fast outside, she hunches her back a little and sticks out her neck, and she kind of like waddles. And yeah, she's got she's got an ogre sway to her, and I just found that interesting. I don't know if it was a character choice or, or maybe that's just how mm. she tries to move quickly. I don't know. So, we, oh, Flora has asthma, of course, which, whatever. That's gonna, your favorite trope in the world. I'm not, no comment. No, uh, they no. get to the pond. She starts hearing whispering. Then they sort of leave no. the pond, and the kids go back by the house, and they find a, a rat that's frozen. And later, we, I think, think the implication is Miles stomps the rat. Oh, Okay. I didn't get he's that. He's sort of okay. stomping around it, and that's the equivalent yeah. of the koi fish they stomped in the first movie, which is Nothing actually should the second suffer. movie. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah, the sequel to this movie, yeah. She sees in the window, she sees a hanging guy. Oh. There yeah, is. which is Quint. Yeah. She passes out. They bring her inside. They put her in a bed. Does she is, pass out, or she just lay down very gently? Because this was a weird pass out. I don't know if you noticed this. She doesn't thud at all. She just like floats down and then is just there. It was really weird. Yeah, I don't know she, how they did it. She probably loses consciousness. <laughs> I would love to watch yeah. you lose consciousness like that. Dave. Just yeah. slowly topple down. Uh, uh, my consciousness yeah, yeah. is slipping from my body. <laughs> I can't hold on. So Mrs. Gross, they brought her inside somehow. I don't know how. I don't know how two tiny kids and Mrs. Gross, who's well, the Lily's, ghosts helped. Obviously, Lily's much bigger than Mrs. Gross. All three, yeah, all three of them. She's bigger than all three put together. Yeah, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, you know, just physically, she's bigger than them. Putting a hand on the forehead gives her a Valium. Then she has weird symbolic dreams, which includes mask people. And I'm like, oh, where are the mask people going to come in later? Never. They're again. not. I mean, <laughs> Miles makes one mask, but we never see the sure. mask people again. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, <sighs> I don't have an answer for you. Once again, she's wandering the halls at night like you do when you're passing out. She <laughs> finds a handprint on a window. Mrs. Gross is there right behind him. What are you doing? And she's like, someone was here. And Mrs. Gross is like, I was here. I put my hand there. Right. What? Now, why? Now, what? Mrs. Gross doesn't. Mrs. Gross supposedly doesn't believe in the ghosts, right? Right. Correct. Why would she be making up stories uh, about ghost signs to to try to invalidate the ghost belief? I I don't know. I don't understand any of this. I thought she was lying at first, and I thought she was covering because she knew about the ghosts, but didn't want. Anna to know about the ghosts because she's in love with one of the ghosts. That's what oh. I thought was going to happen, but. That doesn't. Spoiler alert. That doesn't happen. She yeah. never believes in the ghosts. They're probably not real. I don't know why there's a handprint on the window. Because of a ghost. <laughs> so Okay, so crazy. What's the solution? Take a bath. Taking a bath. I mean, it's the answer to everything, Dan. Just take off your clothes, get in the bath. All right? Miles, they're playing hide and seek. Miles does the backtracking. And then he goes off to the barn and then starts smudging shit on his face. Yeah, why? Flora goes to the old chapel, which we never see again. She gets freaked yep. out, runs back out there. We hear a scream. What's her name? Jumps out of the bath, puts on the robe that shows her boobs. Half, a lot of Not half just boob. her boobs. It's open to her navel. That's what you call a belly button, right? <laughs> You could like it's it's such a it's the deepest V you'll ever see. Like it just covers half her boob and goes all the way down past her belly button. There's there's no reason for that. No reason whatsoever. Nobody wears a robe that open. That's kind of the opposite of the point of a robe. Um, 
Miles is now wearing a hood and has a weapon and is like, I am death. A scythe. I'm here yeah. to kill you. Yeah, he's reaping her. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. It's so it's so out of character for the rest of the movie, and it's just bizarre. It's, I don't know. It's like, we want to follow the rest of this movie. We're not going to see yep. the rest of this movie. We're just going to keep going nope. weird stuff. Uh, and Miles. even, like, I, I don't even, uh, yeah, I got nothing. Even if it was Peter Quint, there'd be no reason for Quint to do that. That's not a thing. So, nope. I got nothing. Kids playing. You know, didn't you dress up as the Grim Reaper and try and reap <laughs> all of your friends? I used to play friends? death all the time, and I would kill my friends and gather their souls. That's what you do as a kid. Sick, twisted kids. They go down there, uh, Mrs. Gross and her, and they stop them. Uh, she tries to sleep the next night footsteps then there's a Mm -hmm. night storm Flora comes to her bed we see more side move in this like when Flora comes to her bed it's like weird I wrote director loves this robe I that's what I'm saying man I it's it's a weird (laughs) vibe I don't care what you tell me it's a weird vibe it makes me uncomfortable a lot of creepy directors out there in the world for sure Anna makes, oh, this is when Anna makes the eggs. Mrs. Gross says there's more storms coming. The kid's happy. They're doing art. The art is doing it. Oh, she's like, oh, the kids are happy. The art is fixing them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So we get the back there. Mild is now bored with the art. Immediately. Immediately. Smears out the, the, the snowman. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand the emotional ride we're taking. To just to be very clear, and this, also this, it's this is uh, the emotional so ride. Tony. It's a roller coaster up, down, up, down. I love up, roller down. coasters. I don't feel like we're getting the middle of the roller coaster. You know what I mean? Like we're just teleporting to points <laughs> without taking the ride. I would love to to go on that ride, but we're not doing that. Well, we never spend enough time in a scene with characters to see them sort of go do something. And unless, be like, unless Lily's boobs are on show, and then we spend a lot of time in that scene. Got, got to show something. So then she's like, okay, now we're going to make masks. She goes to the kitchen to get mask supplies. Boom, there's Peter Quint. Yeah, it's the weirdest ghost in the world. He's like half pirate, half just like insane asylum type of like not in real life but like when you go to a a haunted mansion yes. and there's those guys behind the cage and we're like wah, 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 wah. that's what it reminds me of <laughs> it's so terrible it's super weird it's so fakey so she gets a knife and goes out there and uh she's staking around and miss gross goes out there and is like whoa 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 slow your roll whoa, slow your whoa, roll whoa. why do you have a knife and says, uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> She's going crazy. And the answer is nothing, and I'm going to make love to you in a few scenes. So it's fine. Yep. Mrs. Gross is like, okay, I'm going to take the kids. We're going to go visit some graves. That's what they need right now. <laughs> they need, yep. Go take yeah. her from ice cream. You know, she's being crazy. Not in a graveyard. No, graveyard. That's a, it's keep the tone. Keep the tone in the appropriate thing for a bunch of young kids that have been thrown out of school and had everybody killed. Grave time. Graveyard. Now, yep, it's good, man. Have you ever been to a graveyard? I'm, I've been to like a, a, a nice one, you yeah. know, like a burial ground is what I would call it more than like a grave. Because when I think of graveyard, I think of like spooky, not exactly like, you know, built by the city. Just I don't know. No, but I mean, yeah, I've been to yeah. in, your, in your life. Have you spent a lot of time in graveyard? I a mean, lot of time. I don't, I don't know about a lot, you know, maybe three, four weeks tops. I mean, you know, we visit. I've, you know, I went to Hollywood forever one time when I was doing like yeah. a photo shoot for some of my dolls. Have you done the movies they do at Hollywood forever? No, it's always that's cool. cool. It's a crowded. It it's seems cool. like uh, people. They do like horror movies on a blow up screen over there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you, you go. I've been to like uh, tourist attraction graveyards, but I've sure. never, I've never been to real graveyards as graveyards where you're like. You know, things you have like go see the dead person. I, I've never done. That. Oh, okay. I have I have done that, but uh, like my grandparents have a what is it? Is, that, is it called a mausoleum? Is that what those are called? Like they're yeah. in a in a structure, yeah. just on the wall. So we've you know we visited that and stuff. I, don't I know. mean, do they make you go there every year when you're nine? No, not every year, but we've we've been there. So you've been there, okay. 
but it's not spooky. It's just sort of like it's sort of like it's not eh, spooky. It's just kind of depressing. It's just you know, just <laughs> surrounded by people that you know aren't here anymore. It's it's weird. Okay. Um. Okay. So it takes the kids. You want to talk about the scene that while the kids while everyone's gone, what does she do? I don't know. What does what what does who do? Uh, Anna. I don't remember. What does she do? She goes into Mrs. Gross's room, fondles her violin, and then goes through her under her super super sexy underwear drawer, touches and moves all of her underwear. Yeah, I it's I I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm a little lost for words. From being from being honest, I so. As a whole, I just don't get it, Dan. I don't understand the message we're trying to tell, right? So she is, and now I'm going to touch on things that haven't happened in the movie yet, so I apologize. Because we, we never do that. Yeah, right. No, no, no. We like to stay right linear. We're very linear people. So she's molested as a child. Awful, terrible. She's still haunted by it as an adult. She's also harassed as an adult, which can't help. And then, but then she's like, also creeping on other people so like is are we saying like because she had that trauma in the past that's why she's messed up and then she like because then she her and miss gross have what i think is a consensual relationship i think but she's also not into it at all in that scene like her face and maybe this is lily i don't know but her face is like uh, i don't like this but she's doing it I don't, I just don't, I don't, and it, is she diddling the children? Because they some, then think I, that she's the monster. And I was like, well, wait, is she doing, I I don't get it. These kids did not react in a, in a way that I would think that they were being molested. Okay, either do I until that last scene where they're like, you're a monster, you're a monster. When was she a monster? I don't, I don't get it. They made her do art. People do not okay. like her. Well, you're right about that. Don't you're like you're right that. about that. No thanks, everybody. <sighs> um, I don't know. So then they come back, and then she's like, uh, "I see. I saw this person." And then she ex- explains him to Mrs. Gross, and she's all like, "Yeah, this Peter Quint." And then she's yeah, all like, "I know him exactly. I, I know him any day of the week." Why are you gaslighting me? I'm seeing a person I've never seen before. Some and I just know. described you <laughs> so well that you knew exactly who it was. But you're just telling me I made this up. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it, Dan? Doesn't make any sense. That's um, why my theory of her hiding the ghosts, Miss Gross, pretending they don't exist, even though she knows they exist, is perfect. But that's not what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, we see some more of the art. There's bad guys in the art. Mr. Je- uh, Quint is in the art. Mrs. Jetzel's in the art. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Now we mm-hmm. do a bunch of memories. We find out that Anna had problems in the park. It happened to me. Right. And so this is how hor- she gives this speech. It happened to me. I have to protect the children. And then she yeah. says, you love Quint. And then she's like, I did not love Quint. I I love Mrs. Jessel. So we're like, yeah. oh, ooh, lesbianism. Ooh. Wow, it's 2006. That probably was a little bit of a, you know, oh, you know. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember that. That's almost 20 years ago. I don't remember that. I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything either. Uh, it's nighttime. Floor is crying. Okay. Uh, next day, kids are walking. Anna follows them, and there's sort of this spooky tree that she sort of like spooky trees area. She's obsessing spooky on spooky trees. And we cut back. So we, these are intercut. Mrs. Gross is yeah. fondling her violin. Then she right. strips down, puts on a robe, and then yeah, you know, does, she a, does. does a crazy dance, and then she pleasures she herself. She does a great. She does like a possessed by a ghost that she is spinning so fast in this room. I don't understand what's happening, but she is like spinning all over the place and just whipping her body around. And then she lays down and, you know, gets it on. And I was just like, what is is this? The movie we've been watching? (laughs) No, it's not the movie we've been watching, Dan. I don't know what's happening. I have no idea. 
Uh, Anna finally finds Flora while all this is going on. Miles boos her. Boo! <laughs> he boos her. Yeah, it's a good move. I, I appreciate that. And now Anna can see Quint and Jessel on the island. And they, But they're just chilling. They're just chilling. They're not really doing it. So what's weird is she then starts being like, they're coming for the children. They're coming for the children. But they they haven't come for anyone. The only thing that's happened is they've kind of stood and watched Anna, and then they whisper to Anna, come with me. Oh, is that what they're saying? Whenever there's whispering, I, I don't take well, that as dialogue. I, I had just to turn on, and I'm against this generally, I had to turn on the subtitles because the first time it happened, I was pretty sure she said something dirty. I thought she said, do that in me. And I was like, wait, whoa, wait, wait, what's going on? And then I turned on the subtitles and it says, come with me. Whether they're right or not, I don't know. But that's <laughs> what the subtitles told me. Do that in me. And I was like, well, <laughs> what? What's what's going on? Now, here comes the crazy scene. Anna, oh, okay. Anna goes to a church. Yeah. finds a priest and starts talking to her about you know ghosts and she's all like are they are they haunted or are they abused you know are the kids being haunted or yeah. have they been abused and she's like both i think a lo- yeah bit of both priest bit of both <laughs> uh, and real quickly dan the, the church is so cold did you notice this they no, can, we notice. can see this... both of their breaths as oh, they really? talk Ooh. This church is freezing cold, and oh. I don't know why, but it looks painful. We went for our morning walk today, and it's not super cold today. You know, it's going to get no, cold. No, but it's not warm today. It's pretty cold last night. Yeah. I wore my shirt. I wore my sweatshirt. I wore a jacket. I wore a wool hat, and I wore gloves. Oh, my God. I would have made fun of you so hard. I so didn't get cold this morning. It was so nice. <laughs> Now you're dressing like you're in Minnesota, brother. All right. Yep. I am um, shorts and a t-shirt all year long in LA. You're a monster. So <laughs> boom. She goes out. She goes outside and is doing something. I don't know what she was doing. Here comes the priest coming for her with a single rose. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was making her his move on her. Is she just like have a magnet's like make your move on me? I'm, I'm I, ready for action. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't understand the message we're sending. I it's inappropriate, but I, everyone is inappropriate to this girl. I don't get it. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand. See. But it's weird. Um. Oh no, I know. That's she's out at. She's looking at the grave of Quint and Mrs. Yes. Jessel buried yeah. together. Yep. What? Aren't they in love? Were they not in love? I don't remember now. How are they buried together? They're not married. You don't. Are you sure? I don't know. Isn't he the father of her unborn child? Well, I mean, it seems like in all these stories that he's impregnated Burr, but he's like a bad guy. Generally, well, generally speaking, he's not a great guy. Yeah. So he's not going to marry her. Well, yeah. I mean, you're probably right. I don't know, but in this one, she dies, and then he hangs himself because he's so sad. Right. I'm pretty I sure. Guess, I guess so. Then so what do they, I, what do, what do they care? What do they care about the kids? Why would they want to take the kids? I that yeah. I don't. I don't have a clue. But not only that, why is he such a crazy ghost? If he was just in love and killed himself, why is he all in the windows like? <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. What maybe, kind of ghost is that? Maybe he's trying to communicate something. Like uh, maybe like oh. hey crazy you better leave before you kill miles you no no maybe it's like a, a a charades thing and he's got to do like crazy in love you know it's crazy in love you know so he's, he's doing the <laughs> three words <laughs> movie <laughs> she missed the three words part <laughs> she wasn't paying attention you gotta pay attention you gotta pay attention to the beginning of charades or you're gonna be lost forever <sighs> man it's Jeez. tough she goes back there Mrs. Gross is like, this is not working out. She starts crying. Then she's, Mrs. Gross is like, it's all right. And then Mrs. Gross comes over and puts her hand on her and head. Then she makes a move on. Then she puts her, she leads against her breast zone. Her bosom. And then yeah. they start making out. And then they 
they start making out and and then yeah. as they're making out she starts making this like face it's like it's really weird like a uh, detached i'm not into this sort of face which i assume is the trauma right yeah. but i don't i don't i don't it's weird. It's super weird. I don't weird. know. Yeah, I don't get it. And then they're in bed together, sort of. You can't barely see anything. And then Anna's like getting out and she like takes her underwear with her or something. Yeah, she holds that's what it something. seems like. Yeah. And yep. I'm just like, why are we showing her take her underwear? Like, what? Is, how is that a piece of information that we need? Well, I thought, I thought she was, I don't know. I thought she was going to be like, I didn't want that to happen. And, you know, it's bad, but it seems like she did want it. It seemed consensual. I don't know. I don't know, man. <sighs> so tough. She, this is tough stuff. She gets out of bed back in the halls. Floor is at the, floor is at the open window. Miles is just like standing outside being weird. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they're like, go get him. And then they go out there. And then it, they say that it was all a trick to get <laughs> her. It was a joke to, just to, to scare, scare her, her or something. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why. why I don't know why they would do it. I don't know why the movie would do it. I don't know what you're trying to tell me right now. I. It also didn't really work. She wasn't like scared. She just she, you know what? She was scared when you were swinging that scythe trying to reap your sister and steal her soul. That was scary. Do that one again. Do that one. Try that one again. That could work. But just standing there, it's just you're just being weird. So boom, the power is out. She's gonna stay with Miles mm-hmm. all night. Of course, she falls asleep on the job, and then when Miles wakes up, he like peeps on her boobs. It's very right. weird. Then she wakes up and you're like, Did she notice that? We don't know. It is that is the question, because then she crawls on top of him. Oh, and it's yeah. like, I'll never let anything happen to you. And then she starts. Does she? She's like, you have to tell me about what happened now? at school. I don't. Oh, I guess maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Because I, she, I do not know. Because then she starts getting angry at him to tell about the yeah. school. Then she, oh, this, she slaps, she slaps him, one. him. She slaps him one. And then he's like, leave me be. And then she starts crying. And she says, I will, something like, I will never leave you be. Something like that. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Um, I, yeah, I, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't get, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know if that's what they're saying or if she's really just trying to protect them. And then she goes crazy, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. But <laughs> regardless, if Lily. Came to me in that robe and slapped me. I'm in. Tony, you always be in. Um, Flora is missing. They go to look for her, and then we right. then, then we have this weird well, voice. We have this great voiceover that yeah. you're like, it's the weirdest piece of voiceover because it doesn't fit. <laughs> it just sort of floats in there, and it's yeah. like Miles kept me occupied so Flora could escape. Now. What? When they say occupied, oh, occupied. What do you mean? Fifteen minutes of occupation. <laughs> Remember seven minutes in heaven? Did you ever play that game? Every That's day. a weird game. Just played it last night <laughs> by yourself. Who else? No, see, as an I adult, always, seven I, minutes I, is heaven is when I you lock yourself win. in a closet alone and just have peace and quiet for a while. <laughs> as a kid, it's adult. a little different, Dad. No, we never played. We, 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 you know, yeah. I never played either. I was a kid. I was always oh. jealous because you see it in the TV shows, and you're like, "That would be a cool game to play." No one ever invited me, so it's, it's bullshit. I agree. Oh, so they go to the lake. There's Flora. She's sitting there, Where's just Mrs. chilling on a bench, having an asthma attack, and which seems like a pretty bad plan. If this was their plan all along, I don't, I don't totally, I don't totally follow. I'm going to escape out to the lake and have an asthma attack. (laughs) Just almost die. So that's Uh, cool. um, And of course she starts seeing the ghosts and Mrs. Gross takes Flora and says, you're mad. Back home. They got to warm up Flora. Anna Mm -hmm. stays out in the woods and cries. And Mrs. Gross has to go back into the woods to find her. And it's it is weird crying, man. Weird I don't crying. I don't want to question her choices as an actor. Yeah. But this is weird. It's we she's like wailing and she's, ah, 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 
I don't understand what's going on. I don't know why she's so upset. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's almost like you're saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a lot of times, Tony. I, I, you know what? I have. <laughs> I should get a T-shirt that just says, I don't know, for because I don't understand this movie one lick. Doesn't make any sense to me, Dan. I was waiting for you to explain it to me. <laughs> this one, I got nothing on this one. And meanwhile, yeah, that sounds about right. Flora's back home washing baby dolls, maybe drowning them. Maybe she's causing this. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. No, nope. maybe. Yeah, don't worry about it. <sighs> we get back there. Because she's definitely holding the doll under the water. Yeah, she's drowning it all. We get back there. They get her back. They get Anna back. Mrs. Gross, let's make you up a bath. Like, and then she's As like. As you do. Flora's afraid of you. And then Anna's like, she's setting a trap. They're dead. Right. And then the, the Mrs. Gross back at her. They're dead. Dead and gone. And they're like, you need to leave. And then she's all like, help me take a bath. And then she's like, no. And I'm just like. She's, well, she's like, I, you know, uh, I shouldn't because I'm going to do some stuff that I shouldn't do if I help you with that bath. Pretty sure that's what's going on. Florida. Now, yeah, what? Dan, <laughs> why is Flora afraid of Anna? What have we seen that makes her afraid of her? You're pointing at nothing. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You're pointing, uh, at, you're pointing uh, at nothing. I'm, 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 I'm traversing the path from the house to the lake, <laughs> okay. the lake back to the house, and trying to think when she was alone that she could have done something terrible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Let's see. Boom. Uh, Flora screams in the night. She's having a super as, uh, asthma attack. Miles takes off, and then we got to take Flora in the ambulance to the hospital. So Mrs. Gross is gone. Anna's gone. All we're left with is Miles. I mean, not Anna's gone. Mrs. Gross is gone. Flora's gone. All we're left is Miles in the house. That's it. We're going to get to the end of the movie. We're not going to see any other characters ever again. (laughs) It's just these two characters. Which is clearly what this movie's been all about the whole time. Is it? No, that was sarcasm, Okay, you see, because it, this is a, I don't understand, the whole movie was a red herring for this final scene to me. I don't know. So she goes looking for Miles, finds him in the closet, then they to go together and he locks them, she locks them both in a bathroom. Yeah. And then she's like, I'll do anything for you. And she's, but she's like, tell me everything, confess and I can save you. Then she hugs him and she's all like, you're hurting me. You're hurting me. And she's like, tell me the name of the ghost and then you'll be free. And he's like, yeah, say his name and you'll be free. What? It's Quint. And then she does a laughing, crazy laugh cry. And then she's like, you're free. You're free. And then I think he bites her. He does something to get away. I wasn't, I was laughing too hard at this point to really understand what he did, but he did something so he could escape. Now, Dan, what happened here? Why? What is what is the say his name and you'll be free type? Is that like a grief, like paradise? Like I don't because this is not ghost lore, right? There's no ghost lore that says if you say his name, he'll go away. Let the anti Beetlejuice, mm-hmm. if you will. So I don't understand where is this coming from. What is what is this? Someone well, needs to tell me. And it's like confession. Confess. You must confess. It's like, what? This is about anything re- wrong. This is about religion? I, I don't right? know. Confession. I just don't know what's happening. As soon as, if, if a thing is not a crime drama, once you start talking about confession, that means we, we shifted it's, over to the, the sure, larger religious questions. Sure. And children, last I looked, were pure, right? Well, not these children, Dan. These children are evil. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the movie. There's some dirty birds. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, oh, hold on. There's a line that you just reminded me of. When Flora's drowning the doll, yeah, she says, and I quote, you're a dirty little girl, aren't you? And I'm sure it's not meant to be sexual, but I laughed so hard. It was very weird because at some point, this creepy guy that directed this movie, I think he's a creep. I don't know. I Maybe he's a great guy and he's just making choices. But in my head, I was like, he improvised that line. He was like, oh, Floor, you know what you should say? Say you're a dirty little girl. Say it. Say it. 
It was very weird. Okay, now you're being now you're being gross, and I don't even want to think about this dude. Okay, let's <laughs> let's finish the <laughs> That's movie. That's what I'm saying. It's weird, man. So they end up chasing out there. Um. Oh wait. Okay, this is the best part of the movie. She like goes and looks at the oh. drawing. So she's sort of chasing him, but she ends up in a room with the drawings. Oh, he's under the yeah. bed, maybe. Yeah, he's she's, under the bed. She's. I don't know how he gets out of. Whatever. It doesn't matter. She's looking at the drawings, and then there's this drawing of. There's Anna. Yeah. Her name is crossed out and it's written the monster, monster. or just monster. Yep. And Anna is causing the airplane with her parents to crash. Right. Am I, did I get that right? I mean, right is a relative term, but from what I understood, yeah, you nailed that on the head. So yeah. the kid thinks that Anna killed his parents. I don't know. I mean, that's the drawing that we saw, but what is that? How? Why? Maybe she's Satan. You think so? Maybe she's she's the devil, huh? Yeah, she's the devil. I don't know. And she like she like okay, let's 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 go there, right? What does she do? She like she's a spirit of temptation that tempts people. Sure, and they fall for it a so lot. Satan took her over when she was a kid, and she okay. became Satan. She let the devil in. So she's she's there to tempt Mrs. Gross. She's there to molest the children and then Tick. drive them crazy and kill them. Tick. I mean, she's doing a great job. She's knocking it out of the park as the devil. So yeah. there you go. Pretty good stuff, Anna. So she chases Miles sort of into the lake. Sort of. He goes into the lake and he just works his way down. And he's just to shimmying death. down the tree in the water for some reason. I don't know. He drowns and she's like, You're safe with me. I'm the only one who knows. Now, what does she know? I don't, I don't know. Cause she, and she keeps saying, like, it'll be our secret. What, Dan, what's happening? That's the end of the movie. I don't know. Well, the end of the movie I don't know, is but it's weird. Her, lets him drown. Her, so face, that's weird. her face gets superimposed with her childhood face. That's, <laughs> yes. that's, that'll tell everybody what what's the hell on. does that mean? What does that mean? Does that, I, I don't know, man. This movie's. Dumb and weird and boring. It's really um, just for a movie with like lesbianism and sex and people playing the violin and then doing things. You're just like playing the violin. Love that. It's just like atrociously boring. Just like yeah, it it just uh, it don't make no sense either. uh, It's super weird. You know, at least there were like a few jump scares. There was like one jump scare in here, which was very badly handled. They were the boom. There were no cool drum scenes, though. So, swing and a miss. Ugh, I'm exhausted now. You're exhausted. Well, let me read you some reviews of this film, Dan, because it turns <laughs> oh, out good. the de- defenders of this film are also creepy. That's what I've learned. And I'm not saying all of them are probably creepy, but I, the two that I read were both like, okay, you got some problems. You should probably get that looked at. So here's the first one that I found, which is nice and short, but just made me laugh really hard. Yada, 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 ellipses. Now wait, enter Lily. Wait, they said yada, 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 or they no, said a bunch of other me. bullshit that you don't I'm care about? I'm just letting you know that they said other stuff before this. Oh, so the ellipses, and then we're into it. So you're taking their what they said completely out of context. Comple- I, Dan, <laughs> just wait till you hear it, okay? Just hold the phone. And then enter Lily Sobieski, who is the one and only reason to watch this confused <laughs> effort. If you are a lesbian... <laughs> or a male who likes Lily Sobieski, then this movie's for you. What does that mean? Wait, what, what does that mean? Why, Dan, did, if, why, so, did, why did balloons just shoot up out of you? I don't know. Did you see that? How did I do that? One, two. Is that what I did? Well, I don't know. Uh, man, bl- what balloons. balloons shot out of you. What the Where hell happened? Where the balloons? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't know. I didn't do it. <laughs> what do you, you didn't do it? It just chose to balloon you? Who chose to balloon you? I don't understand. I don't know if that Zencaster thing. I don't know what just happened. What did we do? We, we got ballooned. I'm trying to do what I just did all over again. And well, nothing's talk, working. Talk about Balloon. how much you want to see Lily Sobieski naked. <laughs> Not me, this reviewer. Okay. But I just love because they said if you're a lesbian in general, any lesbian. lesbian will love this movie. Or if you're a guy who likes Lily Sobieski, then you'll like this movie. But not if you're a guy that just likes other people. It doesn't make any sense. What a stupid thing to say. And I love it. Now, here's the good one. 
This one's a little longer, Dan, but just bear with me because okay. it's it's wonderful. In a Dark Place is a widely overlooked and sorely underrated 2006 adaptation of Henry James' classic Turn of the Screw. Not correct, by the way. It's not either of those things. And aside from earning four cleavers for so exquisitely displaying Miss Sobieski's ample bosom, without so much as one arbitrary topless scene, it scores plentiful points for purveying all the goods of a grand gothic slash and bash. A gorgeous alien-like female. <laughs> what? With no... What? I don't know. What's happening? <laughs> Did you do it again? No, you got a thumbs up when you did that. You got a thumbs up again. Your head just exploded. Fireworks. What is happening? I don't know where this is coming from, Dan, but I love it. (laughs) Okay. Four Um, out of four cleavers for her cleavage? Is that that because of cleavage? Cleavers for for cleavage? for For exquisitely displaying her ample bosom. And then he goes on to say it's a classic grand gothic slash and bash with a gorgeous alien like female with no small semblance of complexity, a steamy yet classy lesbian tryst, and of course, two marvelous mammaries that, that act as scene stealers and in some way uh, show acting of their own. What are you, what is, what kind of a review of the movie is that? He's basically just talking about her boobs. Well, and this is the people this, that fall. That, that's in this movie. I mean, it's in the movie, <laughs> but you're, you're not, it, you like too much guy. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You're, oh. you're getting the wrong message. And that's why I think this movie just gives me a weird vibe. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Oh my gosh. Wow. Give me something good. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So two thumbs up seems like fireworks. That's good to fireworks know. Fireworks out of your head. <laughs> I got to figure out where this is coming from. Yeah, you can't do it, huh? I don't understand why. <laughs> Try just do a little harder. Come on, Dan. You can get it. I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but I love it. Uh, <laughs> it's like a secret word. You didn't know what's even coming. <laughs> Oh my god. What was the first thing that happened? Um uh, what happened? I oh, gave the like balloons. I was, you got the, the balloons. balloons. Yeah, the balloons. Maybe because I pointed up. Happy birthday. Say happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. No. Nope. Two thumbs. Two fingers up. Oh. No, I, I don't know where the balloons came from. I don't know nothing. I almost lost my mind. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. So I'm this, just a magic man. This movie's terrible. This movie's really bad. And I listen, I don't want to be rude to Lily, but I don't feel like as as much as I thought this movie was terrible and the script was bad, directing was bad, I didn't feel like she had the emotional range to also contend with what was happening on screen. But that's okay. That's all right. I mean, yeah. Now did she have a very tiny mouth? She <laughs> Yeah, no, she's got she got like a little fish mouth, like it's real small yeah. uh, for her face. But that's uh, yeah, fine. Yeah, it is what it is. Well, good luck to her. Well, she's married to that dude and doesn't do anything anymore, so they're doing. Great. Yeah, the fashion, the ex fashion designer, and I, from my understanding, she quit acting to like go into the art, like art or something. Oh, well, pictures good. or something. I don't know. Maybe she's so out this there. Movie probably had like a personal, you know, she meant something to her. Spot for her, oh, yeah. Whatever. Oof. <sighs> okay. Oh, now I need to tell you my theory. Oh, what's your theory, Tony? So my theory, Dan, Anna, this lady who loves art and loses her mind, sure, is indeed Kate's mother in oh. the turning. And so then her daughter goes back to Bly, and it turns out there maybe are ghosts. So that's that's what I think. So I think they're uh, they're sequential. Yeah, and there's another Mister Mrs. Jessel and another Quint and another pair of kids named Flora and Miles. Uh, things stranger things have happened. Stranger you know what I mean? Maybe they're all ghosts. That's why she can't leave. They're all dead. They all died. Okay, here's the here's the theory. They all died 
back when Anna was there. Anna lost her mind, went to this uh, insane asylum place. The daughter then went back to Bly Everybody's- because, you know, her mom probably sent her with, with the letter. And right? everybody there's ghosts. Everyone there's ghosts. There you go. I've solved all the movies. Everyone's ghosts. That's the solution to every movie. Everyone's ghosts. That's and the, so nothing that's the means easiest anything. way to get out. Everyone's crazy and everyone's yeah. ghosts. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, Nothing's real. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. I won't make you watch any more Turning of the Screw adaptations. I was almost going to make us do it a third time. I found a, <laughs> I found a third one from 2006, I think. Oh, was, okay. Or 2004, I was like, let's do it again. And then I was like, no, I don't want to do it again because I can't, I just can't do it. It's, I can't do it anymore. It's just not a story that people should be allowed to do unless they actually have something to say. Yeah. I mean, I rewatched. So this week, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're, Never mind. Oh, okay. Uh, something we liked this week. I started Fallout. Uh, yes. What's his Okey-dokey. name? Okie What's his name? Who's the, who's the dude that's playing the ghoul guy? Uh, uh, Walton Goggins. Or he like that. is loving Dynamite. his life so much. He yeah. just He's having so much fun. He's having the most fun with with being this character throughout his yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anybody act a character as much as he is acting this character. And it's just like it's sure. like let's yeah. ju- I mean the girl's good too. The dude that's playing the suit, did you watch it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not all the way. We're only uh two two in. Yeah, I'm only two in. The other oh, guy that's playing the suit guy, whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, but Goggins, Jesus Christ. Well, when when it was first announced, wow. everyone was like, yep, no, that's that's perfect casting. And it turns out it is. And he is. He's wonderful. And I, I'm, I'm loving the show. I'm having a good time because yeah. I'm a huge fan of the games. So seeing this, like the stim packs were just picture perfect. That's like the health pack that she injects herself with. Just it's just beautiful. It's a faith, it's faithful adaptation with without actually like don't, stealing any of the storylines from the games. It's wonderful. I'm having a great time. Don't say that, Tony. It's not faithful. What? They ruin they ruin Las Vegas. So I, I would I'd be prepared. Oh, oh no, okay. So the Las Vegas of the games is not in this and it's a it's a travesty. And Do you like Fallout New Vegas? Huh? I just read some of the reviews, and some all the, of the, all the sure. one, zero and one star reviews are like, "They ruined Vegas." Oh my god! How can I live my life if they ruined Vegas? I will never buy another one of their games because of Vegas. You're like, it's a so TV, dumb. it's a super TV show. Why? <laughs> right? Like, uh, it's it, a it's a new story in this in the in the universe. It's not like a continuation of any of the games, guys. It's an original story. Get over yourself. Do all the games really connect together perfectly? No, of course. <laughs> not otherwise it wouldn't make any sense you can't have this uh, no no and there was one guy that was like they went from point x to point z in too little amount of time that should have taken (laughs) you're just like stop just stop just just watch the show guys listen i'm loving it i'm having a great time yeah although new vegas is a great game it's a wonderful game but it's not this show yeah and that's the thing is you can't judge a, sh- you know, like there are a bunch of coincidences in the first in the these these two episodes where you're just like, yeah. how are all these people getting in the exact same spot at the exact <laughs> yeah. same time? That doesn't make any sense. But you just have to let all that stuff go and just you're just having a good time. Enjoy with the it. silly world that they've created. Yeah. Amen. Okay, Tony, what are you going to talk about? Well, that was one of mine, oh, obviously as great. well. But then the other is we rewatched uh, the Haunting of Bly Manor. I remembered. After we finished, I was like, oh, that's right. I said I would never watch this show again because it affects me so deeply Aww. on an emotional level. Like, I cried. Listen, I don't cry. Okay. But if I did cry, I would have cried for like two hours that night. And it was brutal on the finale. Like, it's so emotional. It's such a beautiful show. And it's it's hard to watch that and then watch these stupid things. Because just like, nah, like this guy understands how to tell a tale. He knows how to tell a story. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I was going to make us watch another one, but I'm not going to do that. As much as I hate us, I don't hate us that much. Well, you don't hate yourself that much. If it was just me that had to watch it, I think you would have done it. Oh, absolutely. Um, (laughs) And I'd written down a couple of uh, remakes that I was thinking about. And I was like, oh, let's do one of these remakes. And then I looked it up, RoboCop, the remake. 
it's not supposed to be that bad. So I was like, ah. no, nah, I saw that in theaters. We had a good time. Keaton's in that. Yeah. He's great. So I, I crossed, love him. crossed that off my list, sadly. All right. So All right. then I was like, do we want action adventure or do we want comedy? What do we want, Tony? Oh. You're going let, to let you decide. I get to choose. I've, oh. got, I've got action adventure <laughs> and I got comedy. Well, you know, we just did Bucky Larson, and that's such a good comedy that I think we should lean towards action adventure for next week. Action adventure? We're going to saddle up with Keanu Reeves and deal with 47 Ronin. Oh, okay. I've never seen this movie. Never seen okay. it. I'm ready. I'm very excited. Cool. I love a good Keanu. Yeah. We haven't seen him since, what, Replicas? I'm ready. I, I was looking at that, and I was like, Rep- what is this movie, Replicas? You know, because I had it on my list, and I was like, "Was it crossed sure. off?" And I was like, "Did we do that one?" And then I oh, was like, "Oh it. yeah, we did that one. That one was." <laughs> oh, we did it. We just grew a whole new family, except one of the children in two days. Oh, we'll make that other child <laughs> and, later. And no one's really that bad about it. It's okay. It's fine. So, we didn't need that one anyhow. You know, reprogram everybody to forget that child. You're like, wait a second. What happened what? when you make? Was it do the, what? Wasn't it? Isn't that what they did? They forgot one of their children. It's a hundred percent. Yeah, he like deleted the code from their brain so that they wouldn't remember that that child existed. Oh, it's so terrible. So stupid. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good. But all right, forty-seven Ronin. Forty-seven Ronin. You Let's know do it, this. baby. And, uh, yeah, so we'll be back next week. Uh, if you like what you see, give us a comment. Leave us a like. Even subscribe if you're so inclined. Way too uh, late. We got a bunch of views on the Madam Web one. That one did pretty good. Well, sure, because if we do something current and people want to see it, yeah, they're going to click on it. Who knows? Did we get any comments? Did anybody yell at us? All right. We should do something that people like soon again and just make fun of them like we did with uh, Please Don't Destroy. Oh, the Please Don't Destroy people. So sad. People love it. Yeah, I watched. Uh, they they were on uh, Mike Birbiglia. Did I already talk about that? No, you didn't. Yeah, the, I watched most of their interview on the Mike Birbiglia show. Okay. Uh, you know, they're not that funny, poor guys. Sure, sure. Well, this time. What are you gonna do? This time. There's time. You're still young. You can get there. They can grow and be like yeah. do their best work later. Not if people keep letting them make movies like The Legend of Foggy Mountain or whatever. They had a joke in it. They had lots of jokes in it. They just weren't funny jokes. Hey, that's a start, though. It's a start. You're right. Good for you. Good Good for you. Positivity around. I love it. So maybe we'll see you next week. If we don't, then we'll see you some other time that's not next week. 47 Ronin. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, watch it.